So in the last video we took a look at a one chip game gear with a very strange visual issue that seemed to be related to the backlight wheel. When we moved the wheel up and down we saw a change in a glitch on the screen that to me looked like a pixel clock glitch. I first took a look at it without the oscilloscope to try and teach how I would diagnose things without all the equipment necessary and we figured out that the issue was definitely related in some way to the backlight contrast wheel. However, even after disconnecting the wheel itself, although the glitch changed to a permanent style of glitch and was no longer affected by the contrast wheel, as kind of to be expected considering it was disconnected, we need to dig further in order to find where the real problem lies. I gave you two choices, whether we used an oscilloscope or just blindly went at it with nothing more than a multimeter really, um, to diagnose the problem. You were pretty much split 50-50 between wanting to see how I'd diagnose without an oscilloscope and how I'd diagnose with. So I'm going to show you how I would do both ways. Without an oscilloscope, I'm going to resort to the schematic of the game gear and thought, I'm going to think about what we've seen so far, what the possible causes are, and then that would leave us to simply removing components and swapping things over from a working board to find the fault. However, instead of doing that hot swapping blindly at that point, I'm then going to use an oscilloscope to prove our assumptions so you get to see the best of both worlds. Either way, we'll solve this issue. But for now, let's just jump into the schematic of the game gear and talk through what my thoughts are on what the issue could be and what I would start by diagnosing and attempting to fix without an oscilloscope. So let's just jump over now to the schematic and let's talk through the plan of attack before we do the actual work. Okay, so we want to try and solve this without using an oscilloscope. I only want to use the oscilloscope to show the problem that we've potentially found or fixed. I want to do this with the assumption you don't own an oscilloscope and kind of just see after the fact, once we solve the issue, what it looks like under the scope. So what do we know so far? We know that this is the uh, contrast wheel. We have physically disconnected this contrast wheel from the circuit. So it shouldn't be interfering with this stage of the circuit. The 34 volt line isn't generated because we use a clean juice that we don't bother generating the 34 volt line on. Yet somehow turning this wheel affects the pixel clock, which is on the five volt rail, or at least looks like it's affecting the pixel clock. We're not a hundred percent sure that's what it is. All we know is when we turned this wheel and it was connected to this part of the circuit, the glitch would appear and disappear and stabilize under certain conditions, namely when you had a Game Gear cartridge in, it seemed to always work, uh, which is indicated by this Game Gear pin here is the input and the only thing that changes this circuit. So this is an important thing to think about. And then when we cut it from the circuit, we still had the glitch, but in a fixed position or what appeared to be a fixed position. Let's just go through this circuit and what it does. And let's try and think about this logically. So this Game Gear pin here, the SMS pin, it's basically pulled high by the ASIC, so it's 5 volts by default. When you put a Game Gear game in, it sinks this low. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's presume we have 34 volts in. 34 volts comes through here, goes through this 30k resistor, through the contrast wheel at 20k, and down to ground at 20k. So we effectively just had a voltage divider here of some percentage of 34 volts. So if this was 30k all the time, this is 20k all the time, this is almost around the 17 volt mark, it's half of 34 volts. And as we go up and down from 0 to 20k, we should see a voltage change between sort of 10 and 20k, sort of 10 and 20 volts roughly. So this point in the circuit here should go up and down by about 10 volts between roughly, I don't know, 8 and 9 volts to 18, 19 volts. When the Game Gear pin goes high, which is the thing that's making the difference here, so this Game Gear pin being 5 volts is when you have no game in or a Master System game, it's just left floating. It means the base of this transistor will be enabled because it's higher than ground, enough to send this 100k resistor to ground. So what will happen then? We then have a 20k and a 20k roughly, in parallel with a 100k resistor. So that will lower the overall resistance, which means there'll be less voltage drop, which means the voltage 
out of here will be higher overall. Not by much because it's 100k over 30k. It's not going to divide it too much. But the only change by grounding this pin and putting a Game Gear game in is that we should see a slightly higher voltage here. So it's not much, but it's enough clearly to affect our circuit. So we just have to bear in mind that this will be slightly higher voltage. Also, when we're moving the wheel up and down, this voltage will be changing. So where does this go and what does this do? This is a voltage again to a gate of another transistor. And this time it has 34 volts in, which isn't actually going in. So it's not 34 volts because we have it disconnected on our clean juice. But potentially we have some voltage here from the rest of the circuit residual feeding in. The output of this Q6 transistor has typically the same voltage as the contrast wheel here. So again, between 10 and 20 volts roughly. So you'd normally see 10 and 20 volts going here. Just a DC voltage, but when you change the contrast wheel, the voltage rises and lowers. This goes along to here to Q8 through some more transistors that get triggered by the A, the TPR2 and the TPR1 pins from the ASIC. TPR2 and 1 are the vertical sync, so every time a line is drawn on the screen, there's toggles, and these are two inverted signals, so not necessarily differential pairs, but when one's high, the other's low, so in theory, it's kind of a, a differential pair, but it's just when the horizontal sync pin's high, one of these is high, one of them's low. The A pin is sort of a slightly faster signal, about 180 microsecond pulse, I believe it is, with a differing and inverting duty cycle. Don't think any of that matters for what we're doing at the minute, but all that goes through here, comes down and generates all of these voltages here. So these are high frequency pulsing voltages. So what we could have is potentially some interference here with high voltages crossing over the clock line if it runs anywhere near. The problem with all that is that it's all driven off this 34 volt line, which won't be 34 volts it will be potentially a lot lower voltage. So I don't think we're getting sort of crosstalk. Everything we're dealing with is on the five volt line. So if we look around here, the only five volt line that's still active is this one here. So let's pay close attention to this part. So we have five volts coming in through what looks like a very low ohm resistor as well, which is important because the other thing that the EverDrive does is draw more power. Well, this what looks like maybe 51 ohms there and 470 ohm these are quite low ohms so this is going to pull quite a bit of power not a huge amount but again it's important to note that this will draw quite a bit of power here importantly as well the gate of this transistor is driven if you follow it backwards through this resistor through this resistor and this transistor is driven by the wheel so when we were turning the wheel it would have changed the voltage here, which would have gone through this voltage divider, which would have changed the voltage here, which would have then allowed more current to flow through the five volt rail. So maybe this is still a current draw issue, which I guess we could have also tried, which is something we might try, is we could have just attached a resistor to the five volt rail, like a potentiometer, and changed the resistance to basically just pull more current from the circuit. Uh, and see if that affects the line. But the good thing with this five volt line is there's not much to look at. There's a resistor here, a transistor that enables it, two more resistors, and they just form voltage dividers that give you outputs. So all these two outputs do, these two here, they're just voltage dividers of the original um, contrast wheel. So if this was voltage divided between say 10 and 20 volts, these are just reference from the five volt rail. So these will just be slightly less. So these will be like, I don't know, two or, 3 volts or 2 to 5 volts, something like that, and this one below will be slightly less. But the important thing here is these resistors are quite low value. So I'd probably start with a simple thing, either remove R38, I think it is here, to remove the 5 volts from the circuit, which would then bypass everything else here in terms of current draw. And if that didn't change it, then I honestly believe... We could also disconnect R35, is that? Yeah, I think that's R35. So I'll probably remove R38, see if it makes a change. 
or 35 failing that, because then there is no drive to effectively Q7 that drives R38. So I think the game plan at the minute is focus on the 5 volt rail, uh, remove Q, remove R38 and R35, or one at a time, and let's see what changes. If that fails, try adding a potentiometer to the 5 volt rail to load it up with current to see if it is current related. If that fails, remove these three resistors. And at that point, I honestly wouldn't know and we'd probably have to come back to the schematic and think more, or we'd buy an oscilloscope. So let's use that knowledge and let's just go and jump on the board now and actually try and solve this problem. Okay, so let's just start off and make sure we still have the same problem. There we go. So we have the same, well, I say the same issue. It's not quite the same. Turning the contrast wheel doesn't really change anything. But there's the glitch either way. So let's just try now then to do what we said first, which was to remove, I think it was R35, um, unless we have already removed that, R35, I believe is this one. Yeah, so all the ones we removed here at the start, we could have potentially been onto a solution here, so we want to remove R35, which should drive, I believe it was Q7 it was driving. So let's just remove R35. And we don't need any of this for our clean screen anyway. So it's not really a problem for uh, putting this back on. I'll just keep it to the side for now, just so we could reinstall it. And let's see what we get. Now let's put the game in. And that hasn't. Oh, there we go. Or is that what it normally did? Can't remember. I think it loads and then the Mickey Mouse intro is all wavy. Let's see if it is. Yeah, so it hasn't really changed anything there. So the other one was R38, which is here. Uh, so let's just remove that one. And now let's see if that's made any difference. Uh, not so much, no. Let's wait to see the Mickey Mouse screen, see if that's identical. Yeah, it's slightly changed. The bottom's now got a bit different. Hang on, let me turn the volume up and down, because I, I never thought for changing current draw, we can use the volume wheel. Mm, doesn't make any, I don't think, noticeable difference. No. So it doesn't appear to be current draw related directly. So what we can do, I know I said no oscilloscope, but I didn't say no multimeter. Multimeter is a pretty basic tool that most of you all have. So let's just bring the multimeter in. So let's do some basic tests on the contrast circuit. Now I know we've removed it, so normally R35 would be the reference voltage moving up and down with the wheel. By the time you get down to Q7, the voltage should be between 2 and 5 volts, as we mentioned. So let's use the tools we have, and let's at least see if we can measure uh, the voltage. So let's turn it on, pick a ground point, and I don't think we'll get anything at R35, which we don't. Um, just check if the game's loading. Yep, the game's loading. Let's just try... Uh, Q7, so the output of Q7, minus 3.2, that should be positive, got the leads the right way, 
That should be a positive voltage, not a negative. 0.44. Okay, that's weird. Um, where's 5 volts? Oh. Okay, there's something going on here. We've got 3.2 volts. There should be 5 volts. So our clean screen... We haven't even checked the basics, have we? Our clean screen is not getting 5 volts. It's getting 3.1, 3.2. That's going to be a big problem. Okay, what happens when we put in a Game Gear game, which seems to make it work? Huh, not much different. 3.3. .3. It doesn't really affect that, but either way, that's not a, that's not good. So, is our clean juice for a clean juice can't be faulty, surely? Let's check the five volt output on the clean juice. Three point three. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so let's disconnect it from the board, power it up, and measure. The output which is 5.1 okay plug it back into the board still 5.1 okay and now we're getting 5 volts on the board as well okay let's measure again down here three put oh I think I know what's happening Okay, so this is a, if it is what I'm thinking, this pad, and probably where we pick ground up from, over here, uh, is broken. I'm guessing we're missing ground. So if I measure from there, 2.8. And what I'm doing is using, yeah, there's something going on with ground here. So the pad where we solder our clean screen to, and say this pad here, which is ground, this is ground, this is ground. If I measure from here to the 5 volts, I get 3.3. .3. And I bet now, if I take, say, the ground of the power supply itself to here, it'll say 5. Yeah. So the issue we have is we're missing ground. So I've just got the meter in continuity mode. Let's just turn the power supply off. This is something you should always do as well when you're measuring. Say we wanted to measure if this board is receiving power, we shouldn't really pick a random ground point like, say, here. We should pick the ground point into the system, which is here, and we should measure, say, ground and 5 volts like this. If we measure, say, over here, and there's a break between here and here, you would have a ground reference over here measuring a, a good voltage to here. But if this isn't connected to this, then your measurement isn't ac actually accurate. So I'm guessing, I'm sure we measured this in the first video. Surely we measured, oh no, the uh, customer measured 5 volts into the system. So the customer's probably picked up on a, a good ground point somewhere, um, maybe like this over here, and measured 5 volts here, and not measured between these two points, which is important. So enough talk, let's actually prove this. So, ground, ground. Let's go over to here. Ground. So you can see we have good grounds from here. The important ground is the one coming into the board, which is these pins here. So let's just check. This ground has continuity to this ground here. So we can now at least be assured that this is grounded to the power supply. So now if we test this ground, it works. And I bet you any money this one doesn't. No, see, so we have no ground here. Now let's test where the clean screen gets its power from. And look, no ground. And no ground. So, for what looked like a really complicated issue, we literally just don't have ground to the clean screen. Uh, so this, this bit's ground broken here. This is ground broken here. This is ground broken here. Let's check the RAM. So RAM's got good ground. So I'm hoping, because most of this isn't used anyway, 
Um, there's probably a break, and I've seen this before, where this ground is broken. Um, we don't need nearly all of this circuit here anyway. So what I'm going to do is just bridge. Um, where can we go? We basically want a ground from the clean screen here. Over to, say, this known working ground pad here. And now let's test again. We obviously should have ground now. And now we have ground to the clean screen. <laughs> so if this works now, this has kind of been a bit of a unexpected fix. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's looking solid now. Unbelievable. So what looked like a complicated fix that was going to go down a rabbit hole and use an oscilloscope, which, to be honest, I'm not sure whether we would have noticed on the oscilloscope. Um, I would have attached my oscilloscope to a, a ground pad randomly and probed away, and we wouldn't have seen the issue. So what we probably should do whenever we're testing in future for, say, issues on the clean screen or the board itself, we should probably attach to the ground of the clean screen or say one of the ground points on the ASIC or simply test the ground points on the ASIC and the clean screen to the reference ground point. So it begs the question how this got power in the first place. It was getting 3.3 volts to the 5 volt pin even though ground was going nowhere. But you'll tend to find this in most circuits when you have a broken ground you'll still get some current coming through the signal pins. So like the data pins, the H-sync pins, uh, the wheel will have been actually providing some power. So maybe when we were adjusting the wheel, it allowed it to have a certain amount of power. But I'm quite amazed that putting a Game Gear game in allowed this to run completely fine with no ground wire. That's, that's bizarre. So that looks like it's fixed it. So let's just double check yep and that loads and then let's just remove the fixed ground wire turn on again and there's the problem so I probably should have noticed this but what I'm gonna do is I will also take a photo of this and upload it to retro6.wiki as a perfect example of potentially what a bad ground looks like. So this kind of really random waviness might be a good indicator of a faulty ground. So most certainly this was not the fix I expected, but I guess at least we have fixed it without using an oscilloscope. And as I mentioned, to be honest, I probably wouldn't have spotted this issue on an oscilloscope because I would have attached my probe normally to this here, which was a good ground. So I know for future now I should probably attach my ground here or to an ASIC ground or test between them first. It's also a good note for everybody, as I mentioned, when testing, if we say, does the clean screen have five volts, make sure you test between ground and five volts here, not from a random ground. And at least you've all seen what a bad ground looks like and how much of a rabbit hole we were about to go down in terms of diagnosing this. And to be honest, I just happened to stumble across the issue because I put my probe on this pad here to test some voltage. Um, so more of a luck fix than knowledge, to be honest here. But at least still, that's another Game Gear fixed and ready for the customer now. I hope you learned something from this and it was still enjoyable. And I'll see you in the next one.